Shalom. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh, by Shem Rakakbadash. And double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching this truth. It's gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hope of the elect. It's your brother, I tell you, by off, and I'm going to bring a real short lesson. Uh, I've kind of been holding this lesson over the last few days, trying to see what kind of developments we're going to, additional uh, developments we're going to come from this. Uh, um, train derailment, okay, or the number of train derailments we've we've seen in the last few weeks, okay, and um, I'd like to say that you know through the Spirit, what the Lord showed me was really um, the falling of Babylon the Great, all right a.k.a. USA, and that the infrastructure of this place is crumbling. And so we know that <clears throat> most goods and services or goods and products, I'll say it that way, right, are shipped by rail. Most people never put much thought into how much is shipped by rail. Everything from basic grains, corn, wheat, um, to automobiles are shipped by rail, okay? So as the railway or the railroads go, so goes the nation. Now, I happen to be one that's had a lot of experience with it, okay? I had many years of, started my railroad career 30 some odd years ago, okay? At one point, you see? So I'm kind of familiar with um, these types of incidents that happen. And this is not new, okay? You know, there, there's always, there have always been derailments uh, of some sort, okay? But over this time and the time, the climate in which we're living where everything is just becoming catastrophic, right? even though it's still on a low level, you know, um, because the whole destruction hasn't happened yet. But you can see the infrastructure has crumbled, right? Now, I hate to say it, but, you know, if the railroads are in such bad condition, and they are, um, how much more the roadways and the bridges and the tunnels, okay? Just keep that in mind. All right, so anyway, what I wanted to do, and let's get a scripture first. Hit a few scriptures, go through a couple of articles, okay? And then uh, we'll be done, all right? Because a great number of brothers have reported on this, but like I said, it, you know, it was on my spirit where I prayed about it, and I know that, you know, the Lord had showed me, said, hey, you know, basically, through the spirit I see, it's really the infrastructure that of Babylon the Great that's crumbling. It's crack. It's it's cracking, not crack. It's not not that it's it's cra it's cracked already. Is what I'm trying to get at. Is and so now you see the evidence of it. Okay, the railroads are not safe. Okay, and so that <clears throat> so like that's going to bring about what destruction, right, of a system because you ain't going to be able to get the goods moved. And, uh, you know, you're going to have a disruption, all right? Now, this is the Heavenly Father's plan, you know. Now, there may be some who, who believe it's sabotage. I don't rule that out either, okay? Um, because the railroads are, are, are how can I say it, are, are represented well through lobbyists in Washington, D.C., and it take a lot of money to grease those palms, okay? So I said many years ago, when you see these types of things that do happen, you better look for a new bill that's in the works to be in passed, right? And that's when you begin to see a rash of accidents and incidents, okay? So let's get into it real quick. I don't want to make this real long. Okay, so this is uh, Revelation 6 and 7. It reads, 
And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto, unto them over the fourth part, part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Now, once I read this scripture, it made me think of that because now what do you have um, with that town there in Ohio, right? Now you've got this soil polluted, right? Not that it wasn't polluted before, but everyone knows now, right? Um, you've got their water source polluted, okay? You burned off flammable chemicals in, into the atmosphere, okay? All these different things are going to eventually down the road cause a big, big problem for the people in, I don't know, how many a mile radius? 10 miles, maybe? Maybe more than that, okay? So this devil who's in the earth, all right, he saw Edom because basically when you look at any board of directors on any railroad, just look at the faces, okay? When you look at any CFO, CEOs of any of the railroads, just look at their faces and you'll see, okay? So this is just a small thing. It's a, it's a basic thing, see? But even to the smallest minute detail, the most high is operating, okay? So that's what made me think of this because now you're going to have death, okay? And you're going to have hunger, all right? And the way that they try to uh, clean this up by burning that stuff off, you know, that's a way of killing people. And it will eventually kill somebody, you know? All the people who have all these respiratory problems, right? People took the, took the stuff, Okay, this might affect them as well. Okay, so there's a lot of things that's wrapped up in this, right? And we've had more than one derailment, okay, that's, that's happened. Okay, so let's look at this article right here that says, uh, this is from the Independent. It says, how many train derailments have there been in the U.S. in 2023? Mind you, we're in, what, in the second month, right? So it says, a recent Ohio train derailment in which... See if I can highlight it. That's not what I wanted. Um, well, it won't do it. So let's go back here. Uh, the recent Ohio train derailment in which carriages from a 150 car freight liner carrying toxic chemicals. Now, the whole train was not filled with tank cars, okay? Um, I know for a fact uh, when I worked. On train on a train crew, you didn't have tank cars um, within six cars where the engine is. Okay, so you had like a six car buffer, and then you could put a block of tank cars if they were loads. Okay, so it wasn't that the whole train was was a uh, was filled with tank cars. Okay, so sometimes you gotta be careful when you read the press. Because they'll make it sound, I mean, it, it was pretty bad, but they'll try to make it sound worse than what it was, okay? So going on, it says, uh, crashed off the tracks in the town of East Palestine. It's just one of more than a dozen rail accidents reported to have already taken place in the U.S. since the start of 2023. The accident was not even the first to have occurred in Ohio this year, according to Newsweek with another derailment having taken place on 19, January 19, between uh, Trenway and Adams Mill. And usually you'll find these trains, these freight trains go through all these little towns like that, okay? Going on, it says, and in the incident, Ohio Central Railroad train comprised of 97 cars and stretched 1.2 miles, slid off the rails, although they were empty at the time. Uh, so leak no, um, at the time, so leak no cargo and no one was hurt. A thorough investigation into the cause is still underway, a corporate spokesman told 
the Zanesville Times reporter in its aftermath, adding that he expected his crew to have the cars upright and the scene cleared within a week. And not only do they have to get those tank cars and stuff up, but they also have to, through the EPA, have to make sure that they, they have uh, returned the soil to, the, to its natural state. Okay? But then you have to wonder, <clears throat> because this is, this is something that just, it goes from bad to worse at some point, okay? It's a trickle-down effect because once they get the soil, now they have to get rid of the soil. Where are they going to do it? Where are they going to dump it, you see? So the chemical is not going to go anywhere. They're just going to transport it from one place to another and pollute another place, Okay. Newsweek, Newsweek counts no further than three further accidents in South Carolina alone already this year in Lake City on uh, January 9th, near Loris, January 21st, and another near Ennery on 12 February, as well as two in rural California, one each in metropolitan De Detroit and Philadelphia, and others in Alabama, Alaska, Louisiana, and Texas. And I think I brought up the story of the rail uh, derailment here in Detroit, and both of these are Norfolk Southern, okay? The one in Ohio and this one here in Detroit that happened just a few days ago, okay? And it goes on and says, um, let's see here. Train derails in Van Buren Township, Haggerty Road, back, back open, okay? So it goes on and it says, Haggerty Road in Van Buren Township, west of Detroit, Metropolitan Airport is now open, which is, I believe that, other that town where the airport is is Romulus, okay. And I used to actually work in that yard that's up there in Oakwood, okay. Haggerty Road in uh, Van Buren Township, west of Detroit, Metropolitan Airport is now open after several train cars derailed at 8:30 a.m. Thursday. Earlier Thursday, officials requested that drivers avoid the area of Huron River Drive between Martinsville and Haggerty Road in Wayne County due to derailment of 30 Norfolk Southern Railroad cars. I used to work for Norfolk Southern. You see, according to Van Buren Township Public Safety Facebook post. So, are these um, what people would, would call... Um, Sabotage? Could be. I wouldn't rule it out. Okay, but I do know that the rail system is 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 very much fractured. Okay, these these railroad companies no longer spend a lot of money uh, keeping up their rail system. They're they're in it for profit, so they'll run them until the rails crack or split. Then you have what? All of this water, these storms, ice storms, snowstorms, heavy hard rains will wash out tracks, uh, will will move um, the basin from under the rails, which is your ballast and your your uh, 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 railroad ties, spikes, things of that nature. Okay, so there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of maintenance that railroads need to continuously do. However, they're after profits. See, everything is about money. All right, so let's go on here. It says there are no reports of injuries and no hazardous material was aboard the train according to the Facebook post. Okay, and see, you see uh, train crews out here. Uh, all right, men who are going to have to put the train down, put the... Uh, either take those cars up or put those cars back on the rail so they can get them out of the way, all right? But there's a lot that goes into it, but like I said, through the Spirit, what I received was I'm giving an example also of Babylon the Great's infrastructure. It will crumble to pieces, you see? And I believe that's what we, we're seeing as well, okay? As well as, you know, as I changed my thought here, there was one other thing I wanted to look up. So I could, let me see if I could get it. Uh, and it's called the um, hot box detector. OK, 
okay? Because I remember in that article, okay, they said that because of a broken axle, all right, that that derailment happened in Ohio. So along the rail system, you have what's called a hot box detector. All right, and what that does is it checks every axle, every wheel as it rolls over it on every train, and it will give a recording to the engineer inside the cab and tell him basically <clears throat> if he has a hot journal or if he has a hot bearing. And then you if you do, you're supposed to contact the dispatcher and stop your train go back there and find the journal. It'll tell you which one it is. It'll say Axle 167, okay, for an example, okay? So you would have to count the train axles and know which one is the, is the bad journal, okay? So what struck me about that, and here's a picture of one that's laying right there on the right-hand side. Your, the train wheels roll over that, okay? And it gives you a truck, a picture of that's what's called a truck, okay, uh, with the four wheels or the four, or two axles on it, all right. And it counts each axle as it goes by, all right. So they said it was an axle bearing. So it says here, let's look at a hot box is the term used when an axle bearing overheats on a piece of rail railway rolling stock. The term is derived from the journal bearing uh, trucks. See used before the mid 20th century. The axle bearings are housed in a box. They use oil soap, rags, or cotton to reduce the friction of the axle against the truck frame. You, and if you're interested, there's a lot of people, believe it or not, who are railroad buffs. You know, if you ever had a job on a railroad, trust me, you ain't gonna be no buff. But anyway, that's what it is. You can go and, um, read more about that if you like, but that just hit my mind. Um, so in that story for Ohio, they said that's what caused it, which I'm surprised at that. And in that particular instance, yes, I think there was something going on with that because had that train, I don't know where it began, what, you know, how many miles it had been going, but fr they're frequent uh, hot box detectors out there, maybe every two and a half, three miles, maybe five miles, maybe 10 miles, however far they spread them out. But it should have went off and told them that they had a journal that was bad. So I'm kind of suspicious about that. That's what that's what makes me say I, I would I would never rule out sabotage, okay? Because had their train been going for some time, they should have came across a journal I mean, a uh, hot box detector to detect a hot journal. I know I'm getting a little bit technical. And <laughs> you may not want to know all that information. But anyway, the point being that the infrastructure of Babylon the Great is fractured. Okay? All right? And we're going to see more, more of these things happen as we get closer to the end. So this is Washington, D.C. All right, let's see here. What's this one? Yeah, CNN Business Infrastructure Bill. Now, I went back to get this. Just, and it says August 16th, right here, 2021. So I went back to try to find an article to try to, you know, give you some understanding as to what I meant by anytime there's a bill, okay, it seems as though these types of accidents come up more frequently, right? Because there are people who want it, and then there are people who don't want it, all right? So it says here, Washington, D.C., CNN, don't expect a 200-mile-per-hour train that rivals Europe and Asia's best or even cheap affairs. Transportation experts think what the infrastructure bill could be the start of a turning point for the disadvantaged state of the U.S. rail travel. Now, when you're talking about this with the government, it's usually talking about Amtrak, all right, because most of the railroads <clears throat> are owned by stockholders, so they have to pay their own money to take care of their own property, their own rail property, okay? But let's go on to see if we can reach a point here, all right? 
And he goes on and says, the bill doesn't change the fallout of Americans looking past rail for generations. Deep barriers remain to rail travel thriving in the U.S. as in other leading nations. Attention on passenger rail increased with the election of President Joe Biden. He was long he has long had the nickname Amtrak Joe for his regular rail commutes from commutes back to Wilmington to take care of his two sons after his first wife and one of his children were killed in a car crash. He was also involved in an Obama era push for high speed rail, which they said they gave the money to him, but you see you still don't have no high speed rail. So who knows what happened to the so-called money, all right? But anyway, um, when they do have money allocated or come up with a bill for infrastructure, it usually just goes to what they call the Eastern Corridor where Amtrak is, okay? So going on, it says, passenger and freight rail received $66 billion in infrastructure bill and Senate passed last week, but the details are still up for negotiation in the House before the bill hits that, uh, Biden's desk. Um, let me see, I wanted to get to a point here. Um, let's, uh, let's just jump back in right here. It reads, regardless, any number close to $66 billion would be a large infusion of cash for an industry that's watched its competitors road and air travel receive overwhelmingly more government aid overwhelmingly more government aid rather than compete on a level playing field with other transportation modes American passenger rail has had to fight or it's like it had to fight off attempts from multiple presidents to what slash its funding okay in which the, the railroad industry the conditions of the tracks out there are not they're not good okay and yet you have people this is what I meant by fighting against it they don't want to put the money into the system okay there are some that know that it's needed and want to build paths but there are those who are out there and that's where the lobbying comes in who don't want it you see so we'll go on here just a little bit um, Amtrak was set up to fail see Robert Puentes, CEO of Eno Center for Transportation, told CNN Business, it wasn't designed to last as long as it has, okay? And you'd have to go into the history of how you, how you even got Amtrak. Amtrak didn't come on the scene until 1970, okay? And it was it's government subsidized, okay? They don't, they don't really have their own rail. They have to run on the private railroads uh, rail, okay? Going on, it says, which means that the money has to be spent now just to bring it back to its baseline. Most new funding will be for maintenance rather than the futuristic high-speed trains that riders in Europe and Asia have enjoyed for decades. The White House has said that there are 5,000 rail cars and thousands of miles of track signal and power systems in need of replacement, you see? So it's the infrastructure system Okay, that's terrible in America, all right? And these companies are not putting enough money into their own rail, okay, to build it up. So let's look at infrastructure. What is infrastructure definition? It says infrastructures are the physical <clears throat> and institutional systems that underpin society. The word infrastructure contains the Latin prefix infra, which means below. Without these fundamental systems, modern industrialized life would not be possible. Okay? So that's what we're talking about here when we see these rail accidents. Sabotage could very well play a big, big part in it. But like I said, what came to me, and, and, and probably, you know, just speaking as a man, you know, my understanding and the experience that I have in the railroad industry leads me to believe, like I said, through the spirit, <clears throat> that the infrastructure of America is finished. And you're going to see more uh, 
death, sickness, okay, that's going to come up. Who knows what's going to be next? Airline industry, highway, what, bridges, okay? Uh, let's see here. Let's go back. I wanted to look for something. I don't know why this stupid thing is on my phone here. It says, what is infrastructure? Infrastructure refers to the physical, social, economic system that supports society. Infrastructure development is critical to the smooth operation of a modern industrialized nation. There are two primary categories of infrastructure, hard and soft. Hard infrastructure is the physical components that support daily, what does that thing say? Daily life, such as electric, grids, roads, right? What else? Uh, bridges and highway systems as well as the goods that make them operational such as mass transit buses and trains. Okay? So the, the <clears throat> railroad infrastructure is extremely weak. But that's the state of the country, all right? The state of the country, right, as they call it, America is through. This is half a cook two and one, and it reads, I was stand upon my watch and, and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that it may that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Right? And we know this to be going into <clears throat> the end of Esau's world. And uh the nuclear missile destruction, World War III, MOTB, right, CHIP, right? All of these things are on the table, okay? And the end is here, okay? So the fact that you're seeing trains coming off the rails, spilling all kind of chemicals, people are going to get sick, people are going to die, people are going to develop cancer, okay? The animals are dying. Okay, this man has fucked up the whole earth. Okay, that man being Esau Edom, that is. Okay, so let's get another quick scripture. And I know I'm kind of just all over the place, but Lord willing, this will make sense to you. Okay, so when you're looking at the, uh, the spillage, if you will, okay, that's polluting the earth and it's polluting the water and it's killing the sea life. Okay. All right. That, that's bringing about death. Okay. In the animal world, right? And, and for these people in these towns where they live. And this is not something new. Like I said, this has happened many, many times. Many times. And what happens when you when you have an incident like this is eventually the railroad will just have to settle okay in a class action lawsuit which will take the next five to ten years to get to get it done in which most of those people in that town who knows if not saying that we have ten years but that's generally how long it would take just just to settle a class action lawsuit they'll pay out thirty million dollars to the town Right, and anybody who's in, included in the lawsuit, you get your little six hundred fourteen dollars from it. Meanwhile, you've got some strange cancer, right? And not just you. If you if if that person still lives, okay, I've seen it. I've I've, I've seen it with my own eyes, so to speak. Okay, where people in these towns uh, come up sick. Okay. They can't even make a cup of coffee without some oily film inside of their cup because of the water. Boiling the water is not going to do anything.
okay? Which leads me to this scripture here. Matter of fact, let me jump up. Uh, we'll jump in right here, Revelation 8, 7, and it reads, The first angel sounded, there followed hail, fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Okay? And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters name of the star was called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter, right? Of course, this goes into nuclear destruction, but the point, like I said, on a very low, on, as tragic as it is, it's a low level, uh, uh, how would you say, uh, 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 on a low level, you're seeing the destruction, okay? Like I said, all the other things are on the table. World War III, right? The sea hip. Okay? Jacob's trouble starting to pick up, you know? Um, and now you're seeing this crumbling of America right in front of you. And thinking about this scripture of the wormwood and the bitter water, because people are not going to have clean water in that town. Any town where you've had a chemical spill, that stuff seeps into the water. It goes into all the streams and the rivers. It gets into the reservoir. All right? And, and, and those that may have a well on their property, you know, they in trouble. Okay? Because I know of towns um, that have had towns that have had uh, spills right from companies like DuPont, Dow Chemical, BP, all of these things, okay, have uh, caused tremendous problems for those in those towns, all right? So anyway, with that, that's I, I kind of just wanted to bring that out. Like I said, I've been thinking about doing this lesson and finally uh, I got around to doing it um, and that was because it was on me because it's, it's showing me through through uh, my understanding and my experience with railroading that it's the infrastructure of America that's actually crumbling right in front of your eyes. It, it's just not a rail road derailment, right? Though we see these things happening Okay, sabotage could play a part in it. Like I said, usually uh, you have a safety mechanism that's working that will tell you whether a wheel is too hot or a bearing is getting ready to go, which will cause it to break and derail, sure. Okay, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to touch on that just a little bit. I know I went a little long with it. I'm sorry about that, Salakia, you know. Um, but if you want to know more about it, sure, you can go out there and read up on it. But those few scriptures that I pulled, you know, it just reminded me of that. So with that, I give all praise to the Most High. How about Shemiah Shai, about Shemiah Kachmadash, and I'll see you all on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.